everything it has got a purpose. This Fabrenian was planned over a month ago. And you may have noticed that uh, your test kiss live was two days ago. And today was plus kiss live. Now it happens to be that your test kiss live is known as both your test and cross kiss live. It's a two day young tip, as it were. As uh, Rosh Hashanah will see this, so Rosh Hashanah is two days, even in it. So, and the Hagagola of the Balatanya is also two days. And there's a reason why it's two days. The reason is because when the Balatanya was freed from imprisonment after 53 days of being interrogated and held as a prisoner in Petterburg, he was released on Tuesday. Your test kiss with the 19th day of the month of kiss with the same genius as this year, by the way. Getting so hopeful that he says Tuesday, good day, doubly good day. And uh, although he was released from his imprisonment, he was not safely returned to his. So it's a freedom until the evening, which was already under the Chos Kislev. So therefore, when we celebrate the Yom Tov of Yud Tess Kislev, we celebrate both days, Yud Tess and Chos. And uh, we chose this night, usually the Sabreans are either early Yud Tess, the night going into the 19th, or the night coming out of the 19th, and this is the night coming out of the 20th, but we actually, we chose this date, well, I'll tell you why we thought we chose this date, because uh, the organizer just got back to my soul today. It was uh, just a time. He just got, he just got back to my soul from a SIM card. And uh, so we couldn't make this Obrenian until tonight. We got back a few hours ago, right? Mamish. Yeah, Bakr Shem. Coming straight from uh, Simcha to Simcha. So that's why we made it tonight. But like I said, everything is Ashkoha Pratis. It happens to be, happens, that as we speak, A shlucha of the Lubavitch Rebbe, who suffered from a terrible, unthinkable, tragic accident just a couple of weeks ago. Mrs. Edna Fetterman, shlucha to the Virgin Islands, with her husband, Rabbi Oster Fetterman, lost an infant in a terrible, tragic accident. And Rabbi Sinsadaman fell into the water and she was flown, she was airlifted from the Virgin Islands to Miami and put on life support. And she's been fighting for her life since then. It was all in the past couple of weeks. Just a few hours ago, I was informed that the decision was made that the best care and the best place for this shlucha to be brought to be taken care of was the state of New Jersey, and even more specifically, the town of Lakewood. So right now, as we convene at this Yud Test Cross Kislev gathering, this mother, wife, mother, Shlucha, has either arrived or is imminently right now arriving in Lakewood to receive care, which we pray will 
be the vessel for Hashem's miraculous healing. So like I said, everything is Hashem's practice. And the fact that there's a Siddish of Abraham, Lakovid, Chag, Chagim, Rosh Hashanah, Lakovid, Siddish, Yud, Pets, Kof, Kislev, in Lakewood, on this night, when a Shlucha of the Balakanya's successor, and the Enochal, Rabbi Chirebbe, is arriving in this town to receive care. There has to be some big stuff happening. And we don't have to understand it all, but we have to know that it's happening. And we have to do our part. So, Henya, Bas Drachad Veralea, should have a Rafua Shlema Kreva. Right, right. Your test kisler is not only the Hagagula of the Balatanya, it's the Yemulula of the Balatanya Zebe, the Mizritcha Maggit. After the Maggit was Nistalic, the Rebbe, the Alta Rebbe, Chabad, we refer to the Balatanya as the Alta Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, took upon himself at first. The Maggit son of Rabbi Avram der Malach to be his Rebbe. The Malach only lived a few years after the passing of his father. He was called the Malach for a reason. He was very, very spiritual. He didn't take care of his physical body. His father, the Maggit, actually warned him of a claim of Loch in Guft and Machen, a grace of Loch in the Neshama. And after that, the Balatanya took upon himself as a Rebbe, one of the senior Talmudia Amagids, Reb Mendel Vitebske, or also known as Reb Mendel Haradaka. And uh, eventually, Reb Mendel Haradaka moved to Eretz Israel. There was a Hasidic Aliyah, a Hasidic community that went to Eretz Israel with Reb Mendel. First in Stas and then later in Tveria. But during the years before the Mendel Haradakar went to Eritro, the Balatanya used to go to Reb Mendel as a Rebbe. And there's a story that took place where Sidon was Fabrain and Sishin Zech. Meaning the Rebbe was Reb Mendel Haradakar. And see them with something among, among themselves, an unofficial or a. In time to Sabrain. And at this Sabrain, somebody became very emotional and turned to the Sidim and said, that he had been given a diagnosis by, by a doctor, a very serious diagnosis. And he said, See them, beg me that I should get well. I want a bracha from the Sidim that I should get well. And it was sort of like an awkward moment because the Sidim didn't want to give him a bracha, they didn't feel that was their place. Somebody said, the Rebbe is in the other room. The mental, Haradaka. You can go to the Rebbe and get a bracha. But we, we're the Siddim. We don't, we don't give brachas. And he kept insisting. He said, Siddim, I want a bracha. And somebody started singing in Nigun to sort of create a distraction. And so finally, the Balatanya, that's their Salman, who was in the court of the of the of the Haradaka. He was at the Stavrengen. He said, Sha And then he stood up. When the Kamidia Magid would say a word from the Rebbe, from the Magid, they would stand. So he stood up at the Sabrina. And he said that we learned from the Rebbe 
was das Ziel Verbrennen kein Opfer. Kein Opfer, Maus, Machol, nicht Opfer. What a gathering of sin can accomplish, even the angel Machol cannot accomplish. The angel, the archangel Michael, the, the defender of the Jewish people in heaven on high. See, they give this man a block of her before Shlema, and they did so. The Alfred had explained the reason why a sinner of Abraham can open for the fellow Malach Mocho can be open. Why should a group of people be able to do something that a Zagreus and Malach cannot accomplish? So the author of the said that when a son goes to his father and he makes a request, his father may think whether or not this particular son is worthy of this particular request. Hey, you're asking. It doesn't mean I have to give to you. Let's see if you're, you're worthy. But when all of the brothers get together on behalf of the son who has a request, and instead of the son who has a request, all the other brothers come to the father and they say, Father, help our brother. So the brother says, that the love of brothers that's exhibited by that group request, the father cannot resist. The father can't say no. So when a group of brothers and all the Israel are called Akim Mamash, when brothers get together and make a request, for another need. That is something that our Father cannot resist. So again, Hemia, Ras Brochad Veolea, who's arriving or has arrived in Lakewood currently, should have a miraculous, speedy, complete recovery. Amen. One of the great tradition of Tadus of Alchemtis is Avos Yisrael and Achdos Yisrael. The explanation of how the Jewish people are united. In Tanya, there's a pentagramic base it's called Rama Base because that's the number. It's number 32. There are 53 chapters in Tanya. By the way, the Alter Rebbe sat in prison 53 days for each paddock of Tanya that he wrote. Some people think he wrote it after he came out of prison. <laughs> no, it was Ashkafal Pratis. He wrote the book, then he went to prison. So chapter 32 is about Havas Yisro. It's interesting if you read the Hagdomas from Malachi, the Altenet explains why he put together a published book. Because the Tanya had existed as translation, as, as pamphlets. But to put them together as an official book, a printed book with a printing press and with a binding, that was like a, a, a major step. And the author had explained why he had to do that, because there were falsified versions of the pamphlets of the confession going around. But if you look in the original pamphlets upon which Tanya is based, you will not find chapter 32. It was added at the time of the publication of Tanya. In fact, if you look at a Tanya and you go to the end of Pedagama the house, you'll see how it flows right into the beginning of Pedagama Gimel. Pedagama base was inserted after the fact. And it is pointed out 
that pentagonic bays spells late, the heart. So if you ask yourself, Kanye is the of substance. And what is the lake, the heart of Siddhis, carrying on a base, Abbas is throw. That the essence of everything is the love of our fellow. And the way the Altered explains it is with different Rashallah. But ultimately, what he explains is that we are one body. We're not separate people, we're one body. Now this, Dr. Rebbe calls himself the Malachit, the compiler of God. Because this isn't a new idea. Every idea in God has a source. So this is not a completely new idea. There's a Yashalmi, the Mother Yashalmi in the Gaudi, that discusses a person who's neither but not. He makes a particular type of vow where he's angry at somebody and he says, I don't want benefit from so and so. If Kwaini sponsors the Kiddush, I'm not going. Now, as you know, if you make a nether, it permits you to keep the nether. But it's also a, a mitzvah to be shoyal to ask a chosen for permission that you should release the vow. So the Rishonli talks about a situation where a guy made such a net, there was no debat and all, and now he wants to have a chosen be much a net. Now, It's okay that in Lakewood I should, uh, what we call Negro, a little bit of Negro is okay. <laughs> if I were somewhere else, Con Heights maybe, I would be nervous. But I, how, does, how does it work? How does it work when someone makes a nether and they want to call them to be not a nether? There's something called a Pesach. And how does a Pesach work? A Pesach literally means an opening. But it means, it's very simple, the Chochem has to find something that had the person who made the nether known at the time, the shots who made the nether, if he would have known it then, he wouldn't have made the nether. And then once he identifies, oh, if I had known that when I made the nether, I would never have made that nether. That's called the Pesa, and then they re- the, the Chochem releases him. So the Rishon reports about a scenario, the guy goes to the Chochem, and he says, I was neighbor of Hanau against Plain. And the Chochem has to find something that this guy doesn't know, but once he knows it, and if he would have known it when he made the nether, he would have never have made such a nether. So the Rishon says, the Chochem asks the guy to listen to a marshal. Tells him a story. I'll tell you a story. One time there was a guy working in a workshop. And he was working with a sharp tool. And he was holding the tool in his dominant hand. Let's say he's not right. Most people are right. And he slips with the tool and he stabs his left hand. The Chochem asks the guy, should his left hand now seize the tool and in retaliation stab the right hand to even the score? So the guy obviously will say, no, that's ridiculous. Now one person will be wounded in both hands. And then the Chochem has his Pesa. He says to the guy, and did you know when you vowed to not be friends anymore with so-and-so, that after he hurt you and you hurt him, all of the Jewish people are one body that's now been wounded twice. And the guy will say, no, I had no idea. I thought, he got me, I got him. No, no, one guy got got twice. Well, if I knew that, I would never make such an effort. Exactly. 
There was a, a famous anti-Semitic case, court case, over a hundred years ago in Ukraine, known as the, the famous Mendel Bayless trial. And Mendel Bayless was a Jew who was accused of a blood libel. He was accused of that age-old libel where non-Jews, mostly it happened in, in, in medieval times, would accuse Jews of using human blood in their matzahs, which is a, a charge that had been debunked time and time again until it went away. It virtually went away. And then, out of nowhere, in the early 1900s, it suddenly resurfaced. And this Mendel Bayless was the one who was charged with the blood libel. He, uh, he had a lawyer, a Jewish lawyer. The Jewish lawyer actually was afraid to defend him. Not because he was afraid for himself, but he was afraid it would make the case worse. And actually, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Rebbe Rashab, sent his son, the sixth Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayatz, to convince the lawyer that he should take the case. And the defense team was in touch with the Lubavitcher Rebbe at that time, as well as many Gedele Yisrael. There was a particular issue that they were having with uh, the prosecution was consulting with uh, an anti-Semitic priest who was a self-appointed expert on the Talmud. He couldn't read Hebrew or Aramaic, but he was an expert in the Talmud. And one of the things he did was to uh, <laughs> to take a passage from the Talmud that says, Atem Kriyam Adem. You, Atem, plural, the Jewish people, Kriyam Adem are called Adem. Adem we translate as human. And you, the Jewish people, are called human. The rest of the world are not even called human. This is what this anti-Semitic priest said. According to their Talmud, they don't even consider us human. And that's why they're permitted, according to their religion, to, to murder us. So how are they going to answer that? Obviously, it's actually false. But they start pulling out the motives and you got to try to explain. How do you explain that? In the original context, talking about Tuma the Tara, one of the consultants of the defense team was Avmeya Shapira. And I just want to point out, since I'm speaking now about the theme of Avis Israel and Avis Israel, that in addition to his Many, many others listened, including the Dafka Yemi. And Abmei Shapira was present at the Hasana of Lubavitcher Rebbe to the Rebbe Sankhaya Mushkin in Warsaw, Poland. We should know that the unity of Kali Yisrael is not something that was invented uh, the other day. So Amir Shapiro was consulted by the defense team in explaining these, uh, these sections from the Gemara. So he wrote to the defense and he said, here's what you have to explain. That in the Hebrew language, in the Holy Tongue, Shina Kedish, there are four terms for humanity. There's... Uh, each and each gather other. And those words all have plural forms. So you have one ish, you have many ishim. You have one anosh, you have many anoshim. You have one gather, you have many gvarim. But the word adam doesn't have a plural. Okay, you could say bnei adam, but that's a construct, that's a, you're adding a word. 
The word Adam itself, there's no word Adam mean. So, he explained like this. This child who was murdered, the descendant is not the one who murdered him, but the child was murdered. His family will never be the same. The court can for answer for a couple of years. But it doesn't matter. With the passage of time, this family was completely thrown into a people. Now, is the entire Ukrainian upheaval because of the loss of one family's child? Is even the entire village that this family lives in distraught? Or how they go around with life? Contrast this with the fact that the descendant, Mendel Bayless, is one Jew living in the Ukraine. And yet, every single morning, every single Jew in the world, whether they live in London or Buenos Aires or in, 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 in Sydney, the first thing they do is they open up the paper and they look up what's happening with Mendel Bayless, as if it were happening to them. Because the Jewish people are not a people, they're a person. The word Adam doesn't mean people, it means a guy. A singular word. So, Adam, Kriam, Adam, you, the Jewish people, are called a guy. There's a guy with millions of bodies called the Jewish people. But it's one guy. And therefore, Yahweh doesn't just mean one person loving another person. It actually means one person loving himself. So, Periglana Days, the heart of Tanya, says like this. When the Gair went to Hillelazak and asked him, tell me the whole Torah. Why did he say the whole Torah is out of Israel? Don't do it to someone who you don't want done to you. The Edith Perusha and everything else is just an amplification of that. So the Balatanya explains that the reality is we are all one. We radiate into different bodies. So down here on this physical plane, we feel separate from each other. But in our source, we're one. There was once a teacher teaching a bunch of kids about singular and plural. Talked about before about each issue and this notion. So he was teaching them singular and plural. So he's asking these kids, like for instance, um, what's the word shoes? So the kids said shoes, uh, plural. I said that's right, it's plural. And he said, what's the word uh, shirt? So the kids said the shirt, shirt, singular, singular. So that's right. He said, what's the word pants? The kids said. Pants, singular on the top and plural on the bottom. <laughs> the Jewish people are singular on the top and plural on the bottom. Down here in Elam Hazer, we radiate into different bodies, different containers, and so we feel separate from each other. So on the bottom, there's plurality, but on the top, in our source, we're all one. But in order to be in touch with that, you have to transcend the body. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So how do we transcend the body? Because essentially the Balatanya says every mitzvah is an act 
of self-transcendence. In order to do Hashem's will instead of whatever makes me comfortable, I have to be able to rise above my animalistic, selfish desires, my bodily needs and desires, and I have to see myself and my purpose as something greater, as something transcendent. So how do I rise above myself? Because all of it is Hashem, essentially, is this one act of rising above self, getting over the ego, the EGO, the edging God out, that's connected with the consciousness of the body, and instead connected to consciousness of Hashem and of our true identity. So how do I get up out of this condition? The Bible tells this is very easy. I'm going to throw. <laughs> because in order to truly love another Jew, you have to get over your false self and recognize your true self. There's no other way. He says, oh, you're going to tell me that I know people who aren't so transcendent, they're not so spiritual, and they love each other. So about that, he says, I'm talking about real love. Not Ava, Hatulia Badava. Conditional love. See, when one body meets another body, they're all self-concerned. Each of them is self-concerned. And they'll only love each other if there's a trade-off. What's in it for me? So that's not real love. And as as I'll tell us, when you have such a love that's dependent on a factor, when the factor becomes bottle, the love disappears as well. It wasn't real love. <laughs> you love me or are you using me? You love what you get out of me. A body-centered person can only love, I say in quotes, in that kind of way, which isn't real love at all. By the time you explain that to really love somebody unconditionally, to love them in a way that there's nothing they can do to make that love go away, and there's nothing they have to do, in order to earn that love. The only way to have that kind of unconditional love is to see the other as a soul. And even that's not enough because first you have to see yourself as a soul and then when you split, you'll see yourself as a soul, and you'll see them as the soul, and then you realize that you're really all the same soul, you're one spiritual energy radiating into two separate bodies. No, you can love them. So the Ramatanya explains that's what Hillel was saying, that basically all of Toyota is self-transcendence, and the most direct path to self-transcendence is loving another Jew. Not because you like something about them, not because what they can do for you, but because they are you. I can claim other. You're called, you collectively, the Jewish people are called one God with millions of bodies. One God. And whatever happens to the right hand happens to the left hand. We live in a time, I think, of unprecedented Avas Yisrael and Achtas Yisrael. I think the fact that we're having a Yudas of Kisla Fabregin in Lakewood is, is a testimony to that. It's part of that. The unity that exists today, certainly in my lifetime, is greater than I've ever observed. And many if not most of the walls that used to separate us have come down. And that's as it should be. Because tonight's Sabrina is part of our appeal to our Father that He should heal our sister. I want to talk to you a little bit about 
Levis and Sutterman and her Schlichus and her way of life, which is a, a literal embodiment of the principles of the Balatani, especially if they're climate based of time. What would possess a regular American girl to go live on some remote island where there's no shinoch, no kosher food, literally everything you have to everything you have to fly in. And so what? There's no Jewish community as we would define it. Certainly nothing like a Lakewood. A few Jews. And mostly what's there, tourists. Wealthy tourists, wealthy Jews from the suburbs who take their winter vacation in the Virgin Islands. Well, because some wealthy Jews from the suburbs want to take a vacation in the Virgin Islands, now some couple has to go with their with their 13 kids and live there for the rest of their lives because the one-way ticket for this. So that people should have uh, Jewish resources that they may or may not even value when they're, when they're going on vacation. So I'll tell you a story that happened to... Uh, A young man who I know. Story is that um, a couple of Lubavitcher Bachrim went to the Virgin Islands during Hanukkah to help out with the Chabad house there, to help the Fetterman family. And basically, their job was to stand around by the port with. Menorahs, Hanukkah menorahs, these little tin menorahs, and they would ask people, "Excuse me, are you Jewish?" A lot of the people there are Jewish, and they would hand out these menorahs. It was Hanukkah after all. Now these are people who decided to take a trip and not bring a menorah. Okay, please understand. We're talking about people who decided to take a trip and not bring a menorah, and maybe they didn't even know it was Hanukkah. But they were asked, are you Jewish? And they said, yes. Would you like a menorah? And they said, yes. And there was one particular man who uh, accepted a menorah. And the bachar who gave him the menorah said to him, but if I give it to you, there's a condition. You have to really light it. So he said, sure, no problem. I'll light it. So uh, he took the menorah, and they go around, they go shopping, or whatever they do for the day. And who knows where they eat and what they eat. I mean, like I'm telling you, these are not the most religious people. But he has the menorah, and then they went back to the ship at night, and then they, they leave the port. And they're sitting in the dining room of the ship. And as they're sitting on the dining room of the ship, this man's daughter says to him, Remember you promised that guy that we're going to light that thing every night for Hanukkah? He's like, Yeah. <laughs> she says, So why don't we do it? So he's like, I left it in the room. She says, Don't worry, I'll go get it. And the girl ran to the room, the cabin in the boat where they were staying. And she got the menorah, she brought it back, and they were sitting at, in the dining hall of this luxury cruise ship, and uh, they lit the menorah. Okay, beautiful. But I want to tell you what happens. Ne'er havaya nishmas The neshama is called a flame. And a flame recognizes a flame. One by one, 
half of the people sitting in that dining room got up and went back to their rooms to get them a letter that they had received earlier that day from the same bucket who had made the same promise with, with each and every one of them. Would they eventually live on their own? Would they not? I don't know. But when they saw a family sitting in the dining hall of the luxury cruise ship, lighting the menorah at their table, it became a normal thing, of course. A flight recognizes a flight. And so, within 10 to 15 minutes, half of the dining hall had menorahs on the tables. I want to tell you the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that years later, Mrs. Satterman gets a call from this buffer who was on Mithoyan, as we call it, who was helping out, ending up in the news, and says, I just got a call from Rabbi Shemtov at Mayanot. Mayanot is a yeshiva in Yiddishalayim for Balitzova. And he says, they have this bacher who's very charismatic, he's got a very strong personality, and it's that he started slapping some of his friends to Mayanot. He grew up in a public school, Probably not from, but he, he became uh, connected to Yiddish Kite. He started pulling his friends in. He, he became like the Pied Piper of my own. The kid from, from Montreal, Quebec, named Beryl Solomon. And he says, he told Rabbi Shanta from my own, that his path to Yiddish Kite began when he was on vacation on a cruise ship with his family. And the night after they stopped off the, uh, off at the Virgin Islands, they lit the menorah on their table, and the entire dining room started to fill with light. And now this younger man was a buffer, and now a younger man is married with a family. A whole Jewish family. Because somebody felt that even if my brother goes on vacation to the Virgin Islands at Hanukkah and doesn't know or doesn't care that it's Hanukkah and doesn't bring him a night up, but somehow that is not something I'm able to just let be. I have to do something about it. And I have to at least try. I have to at least put myself in a position to offer him his birthright. His heritage. And now you see what comes from that. And why is that? Because we're so kind, we're so charitable, we're so magnanimous. You're from, and you're not intolerant. <laughs> it's just, it's like, like, automatically, almost, you get credit for that. You're religious. And you're not intolerant to the extent where you'll even deal with non-religious people and help them to have what you have. Guys, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. The Jews are not a people, they're a person. And that means that if one of my brothers or sisters didn't like Manera tonight, then I haven't lit Manera tonight. And this isn't just Siddhis. This is Arvus. When we received the Torah, we received guarantorship for every other Yid's mitzvah. Here's what I want to tell you, Lakewood. When you finish diving shackles and you take off your silly, when's the next time you touch your silly? 
the next morning? How is that possible? What if you meet a Jew who didn't put on filling yet today? You don't put your filling away in Toshkia. You can dive in the second. Dive with the next. I did dive. But your filling come with you in the car. Don't have to also bring Rebeno Towns, just the rush, it's okay. If you bring your filling with you to work, you have a business meeting, you bring your filling. You're going up uh, to the city, you go up to New York, you bring your filling. A lot of Jews in New York. They don't put on film. And until every Jewish man in New York puts on film, you and I didn't put on film. And when it comes to this, and you bench Lulav, Lulav is in Pilskia. You go out, you go to the zoo, whatever you do, what are the following trips in Lakewood? You go out, you've gone to whatever you do. You bring your little love. Little love in Toshkia. It comes Hanukkah. The young of Hanukkah is coming up. You order yourself a few tin and And if you're too classy for tin, no problem. I'm going to buy some nice ones. No one will stop you. And you bring those with you. And you ask a question. Excuse me, are you Jewish? Do you have a menorah? Can I help you out? Here's a menorah. But you have to promise to light it every night. This isn't a bonus. This isn't extra. This isn't something that we do to enhance our Yiddish type. This is basic Yiddish type. This isn't somebody else's. Ruchnius. This is my Ruchnius. Because ultimately, we're not a people, we're a person. And therefore, every single one of us matters. And every single one of us. Every single one of us is dependent on each other. And call me Shaima, Ainley Ella Taylor, Phil Taylor Ainley. Even if the teacher of a year is Lima Taylor, which it should be. You stop to Dawson, right? Okay? You stop to do business, okay? So when you go to do business, you bring your film, and in an extra 30 seconds, Okay, it won't be 30 seconds the first time you do it. <laughs> but you'll get it down. You'll get it to a point where you can do it in 30 seconds. Because we are literally all one. And it's becoming increasingly clear. This is so beautiful. I just want to tell you. This is so beautiful right here. You'd pass a fast kiss with in Lakewood, a Siddish Sabrangan, talking about Abbas Yisrael and Aftas Yisrael. I couldn't think of a greater source. So I had me a bus to go up at the very way. The only thing I could think of that would make this an even greater fuss. And it's just maybe there'll be a few more of our brothers here. <laughs> the overlooked, the forgotten, the, dis the disenfranchised. We cannot reject any part of the Jewish people or we reject ourselves. Make no mistake, when it comes to Taylor, Halofa, Hashkafa, we are uncompromising. We will not bend the truth to make others comfortable. But that's not a spirit to the fact that we need to bring 
our brothers home. We need to bring ourselves home. Until we're all home, none of us are home. And that's what's going to happen very, very soon. And so, Hashem, we're going to hear the chase of our God, the kibbutz goings, and all of us will be home. But until we're all home, none of us are home. Even a youth who learns straight of a shkid of Aslada is in Golis until every last Jew is home. And I want to go even further now. I want to tell you like this. The guy that I can explain but it's easy. Some guy from White Plains who doesn't even know it's Hanukkah and you give him a manita, that's easy. You want to know expert level? Office is thrown, office is thrown. Ready for expert level? Yeah? Can we go there? The kid who grew up in Lakewood. We may not know what night is Hanukkah. Maybe even lives in Lakewood. Maybe you see him on a daily basis. And he's so far estranged. He purposely doesn't know what night is Hanukkah. He doesn't want to know what night is Hanukkah. He's not somebody's kid. He's us. And we are not home and we are not ourselves until all of us are at home and all of us are ourselves. And all of us are at home with ourselves where we can love ourselves and accept ourselves and see who we truly are. That we're a helic, helic, mal, and the altar of the earth. Mamak. You know what the mamak means? Same as flying from helic base, from helic base of Tanya. That's how you're always out the Lubavitchers and the Lubavitch synthesizers. You say, because helic, helic, mal is a lesson of plastic from Eos. And it's not special to Tanya. The Dolagon uses the same expression also. It's described in the Shama. But when you add the word mamish, like the Alter Rebbe adds the word mamish, so if you ever want to count the Lubavitchers in the group, you say, uh, the Neshama is a feeling of Tanya Mal, and the Lubavitch will go, mamish. <laughs> you know what the mamish part means? It means even in the mamashas, even in the physicality of a body that separates us, that deludes us into thinking that we are separate from each other. The reality remains that this is a neshama. And just like he was in Chochmi Law, so too, that's, that's, that's still who he is. And if you can't see it, then you're looking too much at the body and not enough at the Nisham. And if your default is to look at the tussle and not the kicker, okay, we have an answer for that. Learn a little more to see this. Because when you learn to see this, you learn to see this every day, you start to hold in on the spiritual. And you start to see the reality. The reality of the world and the reality of a Jew. This is a beautiful, beautiful beginning of something. The love is palpable. Each one of us needs to stand up and light a flame. And a flame calls out to a flame. And invite all of our brothers home. 
so that we can finally be our true selves. And our Father, can you imagine the indescribable madness that our Father will have when he looks down and sees all excited? He wouldn't be able to refuse us anything. We should be united. Our sons should give us. One at a time is in everything that we need. All of our hearts' desires for the good. And especially, again, the full flame of prayer for Anya Basbrocha Dverelaya. Hi, hi. First of all, I'm sorry for interjecting, but you still have your face. And if everything is a tell mamas, just wanted to make everyone aware the answer to what the face said. If Sabara comes to bring us a program this Sonica called Natus Lahir, or Ambassadors of Light. And anybody that wants can pick up a free minority kit. No, no, this is not planned. Hey, I heard speaking about it. I figured I'll flex the mic and I'll let you know. But if you reach out to me, or there's also a, another phone number, I'll put it on the status. But we'll, we'll, give, you a, we'll give you the kit. Night is candles, and you could uh, give it to whoever needs it. And in order to get the Kindle off involved, and in order to get the Yitzhara involved, any family that gives out a minority, that's a free court of Reese, Re, uh, Rena's ISIS. Plus, you go into a raffle for a day karaoke and a, and a one year subscription for, for to day karaoke. So that's that's the extra. But we do have menorahs. We have a few cases of menorahs. The pick one up, we'll give it to you. You give it to someone who needs it, and plus there's prizes. So that's the paramount. Thank <laughs> you. 